many have said that the Bonanza series would be a great Drivers success over to the your years. Cars. Well, they were correct. And it's one of the biggest series in the country. In fact, it's the second biggest. We're going to start on with our starting lineup, sponsored by the KFC Corporation. Here is our pole sitter, Geno Sphere, in the City Chevrolet 44. Nigel Razawami, USG 74. Four, a lot of fours. Johnny Reed Foley, Lucas Racing Camry, Rob Scarberry in the Dodge Dodge, Jared Mogard, number 15, National Guard, Dalton Lucas, Shell Carr, red and white, Jonathan Cheeseman in the 55 Gillette. Adam Beresford, number one, Amp Energy. Kevin Corbat, Mellow Yellow 52. 01 U.S. Army, Mark Huron. 63. Dylan Luthley, cousin of Broderick Whitman. Steven Spears, 65, Mellow Yellow. Ziggy Moonglow, R Factor number two. Brian Lowe, Edelbrock, Chevrolet. Christian Torres, Interstate Batteries, Toyota. Cristiano De Sa in the Mikasuki Toyota Camry. Apex Brazil, Chad Glass number six. 22, Race for the Cure, Breast Cancer Car, Ron Stout, JT Armstrong, Go Daddy, Logan Sheets, New York Jets, 58, Dwight York, 86, Bush, 68, Broderick Whitman, John Deere Tractor, Green Thing. 19, Ben White, Purilator. Stephen Davis, the Honda Machine Lotus, 45. Uh, Trey Larkin, Double Zero Gunite. Number seven, Nate Sheft, Monster Energy Chevrolet. Joe Polson, Chicago Blackhawks Pontiac. Number 07, Connor Babel, Honda Watercraft Honda. Jacob Stumpf, Xbox 360 Ford Fusion. Philip Parker, Diet Dr. Kelp, since 1999. Chauncey Redmond Jr. in the 61 Sam's Club Impala. Jared Shadel, Three Stooges Beer. Troy Torgerson, 69 Sunoco. Ryan Peterson, number 93 Gillette. One of two Gillette cars in the field. 54 Glenn Kaufman, Direct TV. Grant Lyde, number 82, Craftsman. James DeCourcy, 90, United States Coast Guard. Ken Joint, Skull Tobacco, 33. Ben... B Brian Phillips, 119, Mellow Yellow, Big Chevrolet. John Vantel, Moog Chassis Parts, protege of Johnny Reed Foley. Steve Inkman, 57 Chevrolet. And Harry Lapp, Goodies Headache Power 500 Mobile. Drivers who did not make the show include Doug Spark, 
and others. We are ready for some intense action. It's going to be a pretty, pretty wild day. 120 laps of epic proportion. And the 44 will not move. Genosphere is screwed. Well, that's quite a start. Let's see if he can get back going. Looking good so far. All right, new pole sitter, Johnny Reed Foley. Some said that Foley is the favorite to win this race. I'd say he's definitely the favorite now. Just take a run through the field so you know who's who. Sphere is still in the pits. Not good for the dominator of Speed Weeks. We are about to go green. We'll be on board with Jared Mogard for much of this race, but we'll take a look at the first several laps. Green flag. start. <laughs> Dalton Lucas and Foley's teammate Adam Beresford. One, two, three. There goes Dalton to the front. Foley drops back to fourth, fifth. Will Dalton lead lap one? The odds makers say yes, and the fans say yes. Dalton Lucas, lap one leader. Side. Going for his extravaganza Rookie of the Year title after so many years. Got some three wide action behind. Ooh, Christian Torres taking way too many chances. Way too early, as Dalton Lucas leads lap two. <laughs> Steven Spears on the bottom. Let's take a look at Christian Torres here. Kevin Corbett's in the middle of it now. Oh no! Let's get on board with Mr. Broderick Whitman and see what he sees.
got an engine failure. Ryan Peterson, number 93. One of the Gillette Young Guns. His engine gun today. Meanwhile, Gino Sphere has never entered the racetrack. As we look at Steve Inkman losing the draft. Whoa. Peterson struggling to find an area to stop on the track. Up front, still Mark and Dalton. A lot of great action behind. Man, Gear 5 Prospect. Looking to fly through the field. Dalton Lucas on the bottom, Mark Huron on top. Here comes Ziggy Moonglow and Cristiano De Sa. Stout, they saw will lead the lap. Ron Stout on the bottom. Push for Billy Three wide for the lead. Second, three wide for fourth and fifth, and sixth and seventh. Rob Scarberry, your new leader. Oh! Ben White, engine failure. He will be the third casualty already. White, Ryan Peterson, and Gino Sphere. I don't think Ben's going to make it.
Ziggy Moonglow in the middle. Philip Parker, Steven Spears, all battling for the great eighth position. Ken 
joint in the middle, Jonathan Cheeseman. Oh! Oh God! Glenn! It's the big one. Chad Glass involved flipping. Oh! Chad involved, Glenn involved, Jared Mogard involved. James DeCourcy, engine destroyed, Mark Huron involved, a lot of horrible things happening on lap 20. Let's take a look at the James DeCourcy machine and see what he saw.
Foley did not give Spears much room. It's safe to say that So much for being on board with him today. Alright, Johnny Reed Foley and Jared Mogard severely damaged. We have four cars out of the race, Gino Sphere, Ryan Peterson, Ben White, and James DeCourcy. Everybody that is on the track is still on the lead lap. Alright, for this run we're going to be on board with... Uh, let me look at a good man. Ron Stout will be on board with Ron for the next several laps.
battle we already started. Hello, let's go Bush Baked Beans Bonanza. Let's go Chauncey Redmond Jr. Chauncey Billups? Already up to the fourth position in the 61 Sands Club. I have no idea who any of these people are. The four is Foley. Oh, is he all wrecked already? Yeah, he was involved oh. in a pit lane altercation. Gino Ooh. Sphere blew up on lap zero. Ooh, not good for the Sphere. Dalton's in the 88, Glenn's in the 54, Spears is in the 65. Go Mellow Yellow! And Roderick's in the 68. There's two Mellow, oh there's three Mellow Yellow cars, Kevin and Brian Phillips. Why is Kevin in a Mellow Yellow car? He's driving the 52 Mellow Yellow car. Ah, Spears, this looks better. And who's Brandon? Brandon Phillips, like the Reds' second baseman? No, Brian Phillips. Oh. Who's that? He's the mellow yellow driver of the 119. Oh. Look at that, another car on the apron. The Stacker 2 Pontiac of Kenny Wallace. Oh, it's Shell. <laughs> Same I saw the red, I just thought of Stacker 2. Norm Benny in the 57. Steve Inkman is doing a great job in the number 57 car. Is that a real person? Yes. Sure. The check. Yes. Right now our top five, Cristiano De Sa, Ron Stout, Broderick Whitman, Dalton. I didn't know we allow Mexicans in this series. And Johnny Reed Foley. Cristiano De Sa is Brazilian. Christian Torres, who is also in this race in the 26 Interstate Batteries. Wow. Is anybody out of the race right now? Aside from the aforementioned Mr. Sphere? Gino Sphere, Ryan Peterson, Ben White, James DeCrisi, and Jared Mogard all out. Good. I don't know any of those people. Racing like he's on the lead lap. I don't think the spotter told him he was a lap down. Ah, he's trying to get his lap back. Who painted that 68? I'm not sure. Possibly. Where did it come from? I just saw it on the N4 thing, and I'm like, that's a good looking scheme. With all due respect, it fucking blows ass. There's no decals on it. There's nothing on it. It's just green with a swoosh and a 68. Well, he I think, lost uh, all the sponsors after tonight. Well, that doesn't mean the scheme can be boring. The way he loses paint shop guy, too, his graphic designer. He lost everything. He had to start from scratch. Uh, Larry Wayne's going to be tweeting about this. and Cristiano De Sa. What'd you have for breakfast? I haven't eaten yet today. I'm drinking a Dr. Pepper, so I guess I've had a Dr. Pepper for breakfast. That definitely counts. Well, I had to get up early to go to a meeting with the race team club of people. And, uh... Then I went to the grocery store. That's when you got the Dr. Pepper? No, I got the Dr. Pepper last week and I went to Walmart. I bought a 24-pack, so I'm still... Working through it. How many of the 24 packs so far? Uh, we're just past halfway. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah, because I have uh, 
two or three in my fridge and then six still in the box. I wish they sold 24 packs and more than like a couple flavors. Like but Walmart just has like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, and then like diet something. I wish I could find some freaking vanilla Coke. I've had a taste for vanilla Coke for like a month and Walmart doesn't have it. Fire doesn't have it. I have to just go to Amazon and buy it. It's they the best make it? tasting Coke they have. I know, I know. <laughs> I so, want to buy it. So two people agree. Maybe we should start a committee because clearly there's more. It's like Mountain Dew Code Red. I think a lot of people like that more than Mountain Dew. So why do they not have more of that? It's the same for vanilla Coke. So Target, oh, Target's out of stock. Walmart's out of stock. Did, did they, like, quit making it? That would be the stupidest thing you could do. The problem with those brands, they'll get rid of it for a year. Pepsi? Cherry Pepsi is really good. Pepsi 
Pepsi, Co Pepsi Vanilla, that's a thing? We might have to incorporate that brand back if they have vanilla. Oh, they're out of stock too. <sighs> Look at the supply and demand here. Oh, well, no, no, they're in stock. They have 20 ounces of Pepsi Vanilla in stock at Walmart. Well, next time, I'm going to go to Walmart. I, I rotate in Aldi and Walmart for grocery shopping. So when I go to Walmart next Friday, I'm going to look for some Pepsi Vanilla. That's Coke Vanilla, I guess. is too cool. Did you see J.J. Watt got cut? All I saw was J.B. said he's going to the XFL. Okay, that's not happening. Going to the Browns. Not a bad idea. That depends on the contract. Houston Texans have worst odds to win Super Bowl 56. Tries to even put them on the list. But do like at Vegas betters, do the Texans have a better chance of winning the Daytona 500 than they do the Super Bowl? Yes. What was their record last year? Five and eleven. Four and twelve. What's sad is I think. that they could lose everybody and still do better than that. Yeah, they were four and twelve. Yeah, you'd think. Well, and and what sucks for them, and. What I don't understand is going on with their front office. They started their season with a game against Kansas City that they lost, Baltimore that they lost, and Pittsburgh that they lost. That is an absolutely brutal three-game start to your season. That's like three best teams in the AFC. Three of the best teams in the AFC. And then they lose to Minnesota, and then I think after that they fired Bill O'Brien after four games. Like at that point, like, Minnesota's not an easy team either. No, but that's a game they should have won. You could say the same things about the Vikings, though, because they were facing an 0-3 team. Well, the Vikings couldn't overcome the loss of Kevin Stefanski. Okay, they fired him October 5th. Yeah, so they fired him after that, and then they go out and beat the Jaguars. Which they sh definitely should have won, so... Right, and they beat that one. Romeo Cornell beat, beat them. So they're 1-4, and, and they should be 1-4. and four. Yeah, Right, and then they lose... Point. Well, then they lose in overtime to the Titans. Titans are a better team. Then they lose to the Packers. Jesus Christ. It, now, mind you, this is with a uh, interim coach. This is with Romeo Cornell at this point. But they have a bye week. Then they beat the Jaguars again. They've won every one they should have won. And then they lose to the Browns. <laughs> what kind of schedule is this? Schedule from hell. Well, they, they beat New England the next week. Good thing they suck this year. Otherwise, Jesus. I know. <laughs> and they beat the Lions. Okay. They lost to the Colts. That's right. They lost to the Bears. Back. Uh, In Chicago. It was a road game. Then they lost to the Colts again. And they lost to the Bengals. That shouldn't have happened. No, because the Bengals were on their third street quarterback at that point. Even with Burrow, they should have beat them. And then they lost to Tennessee on the fucking what the hell's going on here game. That's got to be what? the hardest schedule in history. What's their combined opponent record? Is that a thing they have on here? 11 and 5. Uh, well, their strength of schedule... I'm just going to Google this. I had the toughest schedule in 2020. Well, coming into the season... Uh, Houston was tied for the 8th toughest schedule. Dolphins had the third toughest schedule in the NFL, and they still went 10 and 6. Bills had the fifth toughest schedule; they went 13 and 3. That's coming in. Yeah, 
So they assumed the Patriots would be a lot better, I'm guessing. The Browns, Steelers, and Ravens had three of the four easiest schedules. That's shocking, considering... Well, I think it all lined up because of who they ended up playing. They played a lot of terrible teams this year. Played the NFC West, or NFC East, rather. Yeah, we all got to beat up on Cincinnati twice. Okay, here we go. Strength of schedule. How's it determined? Average quality of opponent as measured by SRS. What that means. Simple rating system. Uh, pro football references come up more numbers. If you don't know the simple rating system, then you're screwed. Well, let's read about it. Team quality relative to average as measured by simple rating system. Simple rating system equals MOV plus strength of schedule equals OSRS plus DSRS. Oh, horrible crash! Broderick, see that? Oh, oh there they go. Whoa. Oh. No. I think Spears is in it. I don't see him in this lead group. Spears is in it. Kevin's oh. in it. Oh. Trey Larkin is in it. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh! Oh! He's mowing the grass! Christian Torres is in it. I don't think Spears had too much damage. I think he's okay. He was involved in the first crash, too. Yikes. Dear God. Let's take a look at what happened. Is this the same track we used uh, for the duels? Jesus Christ. Yes, it is. Oh, and then he just turns right into Kevin. No, I can't then, blame Broderick completely for that, because it just got bunched up. And then is this GNS physics, or is this cup? This is cup physics, but it's slowed down. Oh, uh, I see. How'd you manage that? Why is there an amp in power? That's the one? Beresford. What? Johnny Reed Foley protege. God. I see he wasn't wrecking people. That Gillette car is ugly too. The blue Gillette like just doesn't show up. Whoa, mellow yellow. I think he's okay, Jim. Steven Spears has avoided a lot of me. How you win these things? of Madonna and Johnny Depp during Trump's impeachment hearings? What? What does that have to do with anything? I don't... I don't, I don't know. I need to find out.
interesting. I can't find any more information on that. It's like a Twitter trend that popped up, and then when I went to click on it, it went away. Oh, Donald Trump's lawyer plays Madonna. Johnny Depp remarks an effort to equate Democrats' rhetoric to former president's calls to fight. Qualifying coming up in 15 minutes. For what? Camping World Truck Series. Oh, nice. I do like the truck series. And Kevin is still on pit road. This is not good. He is funding two teams right now. We're about to, what, what's his team name? Auto Value Motorsports. Yeah, I might all change that to Rick Ware Racing. <laughs> Not looking good. <laughs> oh. Devastating. Just got jumbled up in the pits. Glenn's coming out. Kevin's coming in. Then, whoa. Oh, he's towing, that's why he's still sitting there. Sometimes in life, you just have to take it. Kevin Corbat is taking it. Yes. He can't take it any longer. Towards the halfway point restart, Brian Lowe, your leader, JT Armstrong second, Stephen Davis has a problem. Ooh, I thought it was a Green Bay Packers car. The Lotus machine has a flat tire, flat tire Why, for what? 45. Why is he in a Lotus? What is this? Green flag, green flag. Is, <laughs> is this Formula One? Steven Davis, known for his Formula One sponsorship. What? Is that even a Lotus? It's a Honda it's... Lotus. What? That doesn't make any sense. And why is the lap down car leading? Johnny Reed Foley trying to get his lap back. No Daddy says no.
movie's commentating club. I don't know. Hopefully Kenny Wallace. No, probably not. I don't think he works for Fox anymore. Unfortunately. Okay, I doubt that. Sure about that? I think the ratings would go up. To justify a hundred million dollars? Well, they're just a company. They can afford it. <laughs> it's like Mellow Yellow. You get up. You get up. Okay. Wait, you're not winning. I'm taking back my hundred million. Oh, okay, DC Solar. <laughs> Yeah, remember that hundred million I gave you? We're gonna need that back. Yeah. Like now. We should have withdrawn from your bank account. <laughs> it's so screwed up. Like Dwight York, Jacob Stump, and Cristiano De Sa. Battle three wide behind. JT Armstrong. Bonanza a bonus. Gotta give credit to Steve Inkman lurking his way into the top five after losing the draft early. Jets.
at the same wreck as earlier. He's been involved in all three wrecks. Well, I think this one he had more hands-on involvement with. Ow. Well, the car looks alright. <laughs> he had other cars to cushion the impact. It'll be interesting to see. Grant Lyde took one hell of a hit. Ooh. Who are these people? Truck qualifying is about to begin. Fortunately, it is single truck runs. One round. Get one lap. Not two laps, just one. Correct. Wow. Yes, all about the launch out of pit road. Well, on lap zero, Geno Smith blew up. Then Johnny Reed Foley went a lap down after a pit road incident. Now the third fastest car, Nigel Rasawami, involved in a heavy crash in turn three. So the three fastest cars in speed weeks are not on the lead lap. Devastating. For Steven Davis fans, he is now your leader. Oh, he's always in the lead. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and somebody blew up from the sound. <laughs> oh, Inkman. No. Oh, no arm. No. You blew the engine. Your greatest moment in life is now over. Good thing he has all the sponsors on the hood to get airtime. <laughs> color black. Oh. Like, I feel like that's discriminatory in some way. Top 31 trucks make it on speed. 32 to 35 are owner's points provisionals. 36 is a pass champion if needed. Otherwise, I believe they'll probably take the next highest in owner points. And truck qualifying is underway from the sunny and dry Daytona Speedway. Please. Daytona Race Circle. <laughs> <Could you imagine? laughs> 
<laughs> hey, run away from the Daytona Race Circle. Bill First Friend, steps. what should we call this track? Daytona. We need a secondary name. Uh, uh, Circle! Circle. <laughs> Next week, we're at Indianapolis Rectangle. <laughs> Oh, we already kind of do that with Pocono, the tricky triangle. <laughs> and first up is Jesse Iwuji in the 34 Hundra. I'd go in green. Kevin is looking to get one of his two laps back. Oh, he went two laps down. And Johnny Reed Foley looking to get his only lap back. If Foley gets his lap back, he will be a force. Why is... Oh, because Foley didn't pit, I guess. Why is he restarting as a leader? Because he didn't pit. He... I don't so much care as... care for, like, the lucky dog rule in NASCAR, but I think the wave one is a really good one. Actually, Kevin is on the lead lap now. And Nigel. Because well, they're ahead of the leader now. I thought he went too. Uh oh. Must have just been one. Well, he won't be on the lead lap for long. Run three are desperately hoping for a caution. Oh, he's blocking up the track. Mellow yellow. Oh, no. What oh, are you doing? <laughs> Kevin, he tried the pit gamble and it didn't pay off for him. The wheel is not straight <laughs> in his hands. No. It's not straight or good. He is thirsty for a mellow yellow. Devastatement on the 52. <laughs> Today's not his day at Daytona Circle. Oh, flat left rear. Ah, oh, Jim, it's devastating. <laughs> Nance and Romo call a Daytona 500. Alright, they've propelled over the lap cars. New leader, Jacob Stump. Famously wrecked Kevin in the first ever Speedway Cup Series race. Yeah, he wrecked a bunch of people, like, several times. It was pretty bad, and then Kevin, like, spun him out under caution. The first Speedway Cup race was an absolute war zone. It was like one of the only Speedway Cup races I ran. I'm like, this is stupid. For some reason that night, everybody was just stupid. They were just an idiot. They're like, I don't know where I'm going. I think I might saw the replay. I don't remember. Definitely on my other hard drive. I haven't reinstalled 2003 or N4 yet. I think I will. It would be nice to see. I'm guessing I wasn't there. Either, there was 16 people there, 17. It was a pretty pretty big turnout. I mean, it's Daytona and N4 back in 2012. That was kind of the, the peak. And everybody loves the Speedway Cup. Oh, I, yeah, I want to run all the easy tracks. Yeah, let's run a whole series of Speedways, because, yeah. I like the Speedway. I don't uh, remember it. It was the very first race, and it was just awful. If Kevin was here, he'd back me up on it. We should get Jacob Stump here to see what he Oh, God. Or Broderick, who is leading this race. I wonder if I have the export. If I can even get to it.
hoping to be certain. It's probably on my old, old computer then. Yeah, it's gone. Because the oldest export I have is like a Speedway Cup Talladega race. Who won? Uh, it was January 19th, 2012. Bismo was fastest in practice. Uh, ben qualified on pole. Uh, Lugster, you, Glenn, one of the low guys, Ken, me, and Speedy all sat out qualifying. Uh, Lugster won by two tenths over yourself. Rob was fourth. Craig led the most laps in fifth with 16. Uh, I did not race, so I must have just been spectating. I think there, there was, that was part of the run I had where I would just get in and watch races, and you guys got mad at me. Well, if you're in the server, why don't you come and race? Yeah, why don't you take your pills, Grandpa? Uh... Bismo... Uh... Wrecked or retired or whatever on lap 10. And finished last. Uh... Glenn was caught speeding... Uh... Four times. <laughs> lap 9, speeding entering pits. He got caught speeding entering the pits twice on lap 48, that's impressive. And then he got caught speeding exiting pits on lap 48 as well. Uh, Ken and Dalton passed the pace car the same lap. Thanks. Not a good day for those guys.
times, good times. second, Chauncey Redmond Jr. third, Jonathan Cheeseman fourth, and Dalton Lucas fifth. Let's go, Cheeseman. Gear five prospect. Scarberry and Stout battle for first. Dalton Lucas and Redmond from behind. Quick time, Haley Deegan. What First out of eight. What? Uh, she is in the one. Her. Thank you. The one what? Oh my god, it's James Busher. He's. Yeah, he is. He's in the Nice Motorsports 44, I think. Nice. So this is the same James Busher that got blackballed in the last car for no reason. What? Well, I, I mean, nobody he, gave him a ride, even though he was good. Well, he didn't have a sponsor, I guess. I don't know why he got run out of NASCAR, but he did. Went into real estate, and now he's coming to the line. He's going to be fifth off by like a second and a half. Thanks. Who will win the Daytona 500? Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Chris Buescher, or other? What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson. Why is there <laughs> only five options and two of them are <laughs> terrible? Look with other. I can see Chris Buescher. Who will win UFC 258 this Saturday? Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> what will President Biden's average of rating be on Sunday at 5 p.m. according to Real Clear Politics? The answer is definitely Jimmy Johnson. What will be the closing price of Bitcoin at 4 on Friday? Jimmy Johnson. Well, what's the price of it right now? That's in like 10 minutes. Like 10 bucks. 30 minutes. Uh, right now it's at $47,362 for one Bitcoin. Guess I gotta find me a Bitcoin. Look in your pocket. I got nothing. I'm sorry. Chad How many times Lass? will Elon Musk <laughs> beat this Saturday?
Which of the following cities will have the most snow recorded this weekend? New York, D.C., Boston, Philadelphia, none. 81% are saying Boston right now, so I'm guessing they're probably going to get hit with a lot of snow. Oh my god! Oh, it's, oh, it's the big, oh, yo, Chauncey man. Redman, Lucas Racing Prospect, goes upside down. Don't be Lucas if There's another pack coming. <laughs> no! Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was very close to being not good. All right, Lucas Racing, not in a good position at all. I don't know what's worse, the fact that Fox left Jimmy Johnson on the list of who will win the Daytona 500, or that five percent of all voters voted for him. I'm surprised he didn't get the most votes, because you'd think people would just vote for him for no reason. Which market will have the lowest percentage gain on Wednesday, February 17th at market close? The GIA, S&P 500, NASDAQ, oil, gold, or silver? Gotta go for NASDAQ. Yeah. Airbnb reports earnings Tuesday the 16th. Will Airbnb open above or below 200 per share? What will the last digit after the decimal be for Stockwitz's social sentiment score on Spy Stream on Friday at 4 p.m.? NASDAQ. Pick a number between 0 and 9. <laughs> NASDAQ. <laughs> no, pick a number between 0 and 9. Uh, 0. How many times will Facebook close positive at market close for the week? Pick a number between zero and five. Zero. Pick a number between zero and thirty thousand. Killing me here. Any other contests I can enter? Ooh, okay. It's NBA. Who will win it by how many points? Nuggets and Celtics. Celtics will win by three points. Spurs Pistons. Spurs will win by one. Pelicans Grizzlies. Uh, that's a tough one because they're both weird. They're both like 10 and 10 and 11 and 13. Are you betting? No. It's Fox who picks, you just make picks, and if you get like all of them right, you win like a thousand dollars or something. Oh, well let me get my book here. God. Because I want to give you good information. Let me guess, you're looking at a Lowe's catalog? No. Uh... You said Celtics and who? Uh, Nuggets? Yeah, minus three. What's the second one? First Pistons? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the... Spurs by one. Pelicans Grizzlies? Uh, Grizzlies by four. These are for Tuesday's games. Uh, Lakers or Wolves? 
are gonna be Lakers by a lot. Nine. Yeah. They're twenty and six. The Wolves are uh, not. Lakers Thunder. Lakers by three. And finally, Nets and Suns. That's my friend. Wait, what team did Durant get traded to? The Nets. Nets by five. Uh, okay, gotta go and make amendments now. No, Nets by three. picks. Okay, we're gonna leave the picks I alone. I the Suns are sort of good this year. I know, they're 15 and 9. And the Nets have been kind of spotty because they have no defense. Alright, well, in this one, if I get all of them correct, I win $25,000. Flip between me and anybody else who gets them all correct. Congratulations on your win, sir. I hope so. And then when I get on here Tuesday, I won $25,000! And you'll be like, I get a cut of that. I gave you all the bets! I gave you the numbers! Just pretend nothing happened. What are you talking about? We were here on TeamSpeak. I was telling it to you on stream. Go back to the stream and watch it. It's on YouTube. Christian no, it's not. Torres off the pace. Oh, that might bring out a caution. If he doesn't make it back around. He's going to drive through the grass. He's driving through the grass. That's not a good strategy. As the sun sets on a bad state of affairs for the interstate batteries machine. Looking to steal a Bush Bonanza victory. Day. Not a good day oh. for the extravaganza regulars. Meanwhile, up front, Ziggy Moonglow at the point. Why is this a day to night track with a huge shadow in turn one? It might look better if you had the shadow turned off. I don't know, it looks fine to me. Well, but the, the sky's about to be like full night and you're gonna have this giant shadow over the track. What's wrong with that? There's not a giant shadow over the track when the sun goes all the way down? No, nah, we're gonna have a giant shadow over the track. Oh my god, this is weird. What, is Aton haunted now? <laughs> it's a fucking tiny one. <laughs> Just ask Bobby Isaac. Yeah, he's haunting he's haunting you too. Let me get that second pack going here. I'm not a shopping list. I'm Bobby Isaac. Woo! <laughs> I need some lunch, but I don't know what I want to eat. <laughs> Just picturing SpongeBob and Bobby Isaacs actually on it. And all the kids are like, who's that? Are you telling me I should find that scene and paste a picture of Bobby Isaac <laughs> over the yes. shopping list? <laughs> Two bags it is. No. I'm still convinced that Jiffy Pop is the best popcorn, but people hate making it so much that they don't make it. Okay, listen, buddy, I'm having Clancy's. Okay? Is that microwave? Yes. No. Everyone who eats so good. microwave popcorn deserves to be shot, because it tastes terrible. Oh, thanks. Thank you. All I right. appreciate Hitman on the loose, Zach Michael. Oh, what does he do? He eating popcorn. He, he ate microwave popcorn <laughs> out of a bag like a man. There's no way this bread is still good. The use by date on it. Best of use by January 19th. 
guess. There's, I guess it's still good. Interesting. Red would be good that long past the Best Buy date. Dude, right when the Best Buy date is there, it turns blue. <laughs> Turn blue. I like blue foods. Yes, like moldy strawberries. They it's like, but now they're, they're blue. They're like Blue's Clues, but food. <laughs> hey, Charlie, eat this blue strawberry. Why? Well, it's like Blue's Clues. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's good. There's nothing... No spots on it. It smells good. It's still kind of soft. said it was soft. I like my crunchy. I like a caramel corn. Caramel corn? Yes. Oh no, slow piece of poo lap car. Oh. No. Get him out of here, he's fired. said Tony Roper. Corey Roper on the racetrack now in truck qualifying. Are they related? No. Still good. Peanut butter. Yeah. You're eating peanut butter with your popcorn? No, oh, I'm making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Why didn't I talk about bread? You were just eating popcorn. No, oh, I wasn't. I'm not actually eating corn for lunch. Oh, the bread is soft? Yes. Oh, I thought you said the popcorn was soft. <laughs> why That's why I said I like hard popcorn. It's soft. It's, uh, you got some problems. You got some popcorn problems there. Alright, 20 laps to go. Glenn Kaufman is your leader. Hang on, Glenn, man. Could he pull the Bonanza upset? The fans Probably. say no, and the experts say no. Hate when you get jelly, and after a while of using it, you like get some of the jelly around like the lid, and then that jelly kind of like adheres itself. It's just stuck. Yeah. Okay, this is. We have technology. Not working. Throw it at the wall. <laughs> so, uh, what happened here? Uh, I threw a jar of jelly out my window and broke it. Well, I, yeah, the window was closed when I threw it. But the jar's okay. It's plastic. They're really need you to move off campus. Put that in my memoirs. Got fired from school because of jelly <laughs> incident. It was a jelly incident. I chucked a jar of jelly through a window. Why? Because I couldn't open it? If you think well, about the... <laughs> it, there's so many things you could do in four years that could get you fired from school. I'm only here for three. Oh, lucky you. I think I'm... Yeah. Well, not even three. Two years and... Two 
three years and eight months. Like two and a two thirds years. Well, hey, look on the bright side. Dara Jelly may be stuck, but the window's open. It's only a bright side if the sun's out. Oh, the blinds are open. <laughs> what department in, at, in, in Lowe's, at Lowe's, what department in Lowe's sells window blinds? The blinds department? Oh. Home decor? I mean, what? Well, you asked me a question and then I'm giving you answers and you're like, no, what? That's a, that's a department? Yes. Is there like a specified team for that department or does another department oversee it? It's called the Home Decor Team. Oh. Also yeah, known as Jim from Home Decor. <laughs> I don't know, Jim. It's the, uh, at Menards, we had like seven departments or something. And uh, plumbing took care of housewares. And home decor, I guess, blinds and stuff was considered flooring. People would always come to the windows and doors, the millwork department, looking for window blinds. And I'm like, no, you gotta go down to flooring. And they're like, going to Lowe's. I'm like, well, that's further than the flooring department, sir. What are housewares? Like... clothing. They sell clothes at Menards? Yeah, that's where I bought uh, some of my t-shirts and I have a couple pairs of pants where I bought my uh, cargo shorts. Wow. And they sell like plates and bowls and stuff, pots and pans. Those are like cabinets and appliances though, kitchen stuff. But I got my coffee maker. I can see a coffee maker, but clothes is kind of different. I'm surprised I mean, they sell clothes. It's not like a full-on clothing department. They sell like jeans and like work pants and stuff. T-shirts. Like Menard's okay. brand of t-shirts. Ten pack of white t-shirts. Oh Jesus. Glenn made it through. That's well, cool. That's that separates cool. the packs. Oh yeah, it might actually bring them back together here. GM says Blaine Gabbert could be successor to Tom Brady. Yeah, okay, and Jared Stidham's gonna be. Ben Roethlisberger has never beat the Browns in the playoffs. All his regular season wins didn't mean anything much, now did they? No, they're completely defunct. Are we done with pit stops? We should be. Because they, they pitted with like... I don't even know, but it wasn't that long ago. My biggest fear is that Chauncey Redmond's gonna show up again. Was that that speed bump we just ran over? Yeah. Oh. Top six, Ron Stout, Glenn Kaufman, 
Dwight York, Logan Sheets, Ziggy Moonglow, and Mark Huron. The consensus is that we will vote and not vote. Cheer for Glenn. Go Glenn. I'd root for my roommate, but I'd rather root for Glenn. Battle for <laughs> Battle for the lead, Glenn. Somebody blew up. Oh no! It's me! Honda Lotus Davis. No. Wanna something crazy? We are closer to the year 2040 than we were the year 2000. That sounds about right. Oh, that's nice to bring out caution, Jim. Oh, man. Maybe. Oh! Whoa! I don't think so. I think they're gonna stay out there. No caution. Wow. It's a six-man race. Can the second pack catch up? He off the track yet? Yeah, he's off the track. Lots of engine failures today. Here's the second pack. Cristiano De Sa and Adam Beresford lead it. Steven Spears is in it. He's in ninth. After all those wrecks. Involved in literally every crash today. Inside the top ten. For now, bad lines. Lining up. Oh, give it. No. Oh. No, Dalton. Not gonna help their chances to catch this next group, but if Dalton blocks the whole field, wow, Dalton, very gentlemanly. This is the first time in extravaganza history a lap car has yielded to the lead lap cars. Dalton just saved two years of his career with that. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Well, he's blocking the other lap car. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Never mind my never mind. <laughs> Get some draft off of Dalton. That's going to be a big deal here. Well, like we saw in the dual race, they were kind of stuck in the back there. About three seconds or so. Ziggy Moonglow. Richard Dalton just blocked that entire second group. They got through okay, I think. At least the first group. And, ooh, Ziggy and Logan make contact. Oh! Glenn maintains the lead as we head into the night. This 3 wide's not going to help their chances. As this giant evening shadow still bestows upon Daytona at full darkness. See <laughs> my point now. Yeah. Oh no. No. Low car. <laughs> Alright, catch him on the back stretch. That second group shaved another two tenths off. Oh my god, he's holding him slow. Oh god. Alright, if you roll a D7, get past him. Wow, that was pretty fortunate. That can be really needed them to get held up there to have any chance. Now if they get held up, they're done. Judgment day. Oh, okay. I think he has some damage. 
obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that car's on pace. Well, this, this is this isn't his uh, danger zone ride. This is a uh, a leased car we put down for the series. We get we supplied the body. The motor was supplied by somebody else. Coming to four laps to go. Morgan Sheets is your leader. Now the gap got a tenth smaller. If they can get it within a second, they'll get their draft. Any other lap cars that could pose a threat? Doesn't look like it. If there are, they're not going to be super slow. Ooh, they closed in another tenth that time. Got they're inching it closer. Cars. Yeah, but they're running out of laps. There's only going to be three to go at the line. Rob is leading the second pack. He's gonna lose a lot of time. That might, might help that second group. Yeah, once he gets back up there, that might be in his range. Well, as soon as they get a sniff of draft, oh, they're gonna be there. I think they got their draft now. Yeah, we're under a second and a half. They're gonna catch them. It doesn't matter if they can do anything when they get there. Just catching them's one thing. Spears, I think he can do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if Spears wins, I'll buy that $10 can of vanilla Coke on eBay. Oh. Oh, no! Oh, pit stop. Ziggy Moonglow. They were short on fuel. Adam, no. Oh, who else is going to be close here? We're unaware of the pit strategy presently, so there may be some knowledge to be had here soon. Logan Sheets loses the lead. Ron Stout on the bottom. Who's in the eighth one? Christian Torres, one lap down on the bottom. Here comes Desa. Keep your eye on pit road here. Last call for pit stops. Time to go all in or fold. Oh. They're going all in, Jim. White flag. They saw to the front. Rob Scott, uh, second. Lap car. Is Torres the only lap car in this front 10 or so? Yes. Besides Kevin. Uh, oh, Rob's enough. looking in the middle. He's got no help right now. They're shuffling Christian out. Oh, man. Nice. Cristiano de Sa, protege of Christian Torres. In the lead, they are side by side by side behind. De Sa, known for his super speedway racing skills. Up front, can he stay up front? Here comes Brightlo on the bottom. Oh! Gonna be a drag race to the Ooh. line. Cristiano De Sa wins by .02 over Brian Lowe. <laughs> Rob Scarberry third, Joe Bolson fourth, Ron Stout fifth. Rob is gonna win that one. Dwight York sixth, Glenn Coffin seventh. Logan Sheets 8th, Jacob Stone 9th, Troy Torgerson 10th, Ken Joint, Brian Phillips, Steven Spears 13th, JT Armstrong, and Broderick Whitman, your top 15, then Philip Parker, Jonathan Cheeseman, Nate Sheft, Ryan Peterson, or no, Trey Larkin, and Harry Lapp, your top 20. The guys that pitted late, Ziggy Moonglow, Mark Huron, John Vantel, and Adam Beresford. Lap down cars, Johnny Reed Foley, Jared Shadel, Connor Babel, uh, Dylan Luthley, Dalton Lucas, 29th, Grant Lyde, 30th, 
Chad Glass, Nigel Ramasamy, Christian Torres, Kevin Corbett, and Chauncey Redmond Jr., your top 35. And the DNFs include Stephen Davis, Engine, Steve Inkman, Engine, Jared Mogard, Crash, uh, James DeCourcy, Engine, Brian Brian White Engine. <laughs> Brian Woe. <Woe. laughs> um, who are you, people? Whoa, Jim. Ryan Peterson Engine and Gino Sphere could not get in gear or did steer not start as he watched his peers right away. Good win, Cristiano de Sa. Excellent race. Have a good night.